Who stands out most in your mind in the struggle of civil rights, and what did they do to make them stand out to you? The, the most important figure that I know of in my whole lifetime one was Marcus Garvey. I thought I had on this shirt. <laughs> no, it was my family here. <laughs> shirt. But Marcus Garvey from old. But the person who carried on his legacy in a different way, in a way that I like it, is uh, Dr. Marlana Karinga. And Dr. Karinga stands out because he saw the importance of culture as the answer. And when we say culture, we mean the self-conscious, listen to this definition of, of culture, the self-conscious thought and practice by which a people creates itself, names itself, and then introduces itself to history and society. That's through culture. And it encompasses many areas, it, not just uh, song and dance, or entertainment, but also history, also spirituality, also economic organization, also uh, political organization, social organization, creative production as well, and then ethos which shapes your whole human personality that comes out of the practice of those other seven areas. So culture is very important to me. I actually really love that. Uh, definition of culture and I think me as a young person uh, not only is that one of the thing I embrace but it's something I struggle with teaching to others but at the same time I see my culture black culture uh, being being yeah I'm gonna go as far as say being stolen from me by many different uh, cultures in America. So do you think there's a line between sharing your culture and having your culture appropriated and stolen from you in America and throughout the world? And can you talk about, discuss that concept a little bit? That's a real good question because that's what Dr. Karina taught. There's a word called kawaiida, K-A-W-A-I-D-A, kawaiida. And kawaiida takes from the past. What is tradition? That's a traditional. That's the first thing you have to decide in establishing your culture. It's a tradition or in your own in your own experience. Not in Europe, not in Mexico, not in China, but in Africa. It's a traditional. That's the first question I ask. Is it traditional? I want to know is it traditional. But it's not enough to say because it's traditional in Africa, then I should adopt it here because it's been a separation, 400 years of separation. So I, I just can't. And plus, it's too big. I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know what's next if I based it tr uh, strictly on tradition. But the second question that I ask, and we have to ask, is, is it reasonable? Is it reasonable? Is it traditional? Is it reasonable in America? And then thirdly, how would it prove itself in practice, if I should practice it? So then when we had our wedding, we had a kawaii, the African wedding, we took the best that we could find in Africa. We shaped it uh, as to its reasonableness in America. Then we said, how would it prove itself in practice? Everybody cried. Everybody saw the beauty. Everybody loved it. They, it was in 1984, and people talk about it like it was yesterday. And over a thousand people were there because it was so powerful. But it was a kawaii eater, African Wedding. We did not jump brooms. Oh, no. I don't know where that came from the enslavement period. So that's not traditional in Africa. So why would I jump a broom? I don't, I've been careful to ask, is it traditional in Africa?